I have discovered that this is not the sort of thing you sort of take every so often, like you go to church, but it's something that you could take uh, several times in a gradually diminishing quantity, and then you've had it. Once you get the message, hang up the phone. Classical quote by Alan Watts, right? But a lot of controversy around that in the psychedelic community. Meaning that once you get the spiritual revelation, what, once you get the mystical experience and the insight, there's no need to go back to the drug, to the substance itself. But is that really true, right? Because we know, we humans, we forget. We tend to forget over and over and over again. And also, is there just a single message to be received on the phone when you have divine intelligence on the other line? And also, if you have a teacher, then why not call him every once in a while to receive some more teachings? That's just some perspectives around the question of frequency. How often do we go into psychedelic experience? That's the topic for today's video because I got the question quite a few times of like, when should I trip again? When is the time to trip again? And that's what we're gonna dive into today. This is just gonna be a tiny sliver of a huge topic. We could talk hours about it and I will create a whole course about it, which will be published in a future school community, which is not present yet, but you can sign up for the waitlist to get some special gifts and also be the first to be notified when this course and this platform is going to be co-created by us and going to be open for our community. Link is in the video description. So frequency of use, there's a rule of thumb. And I don't know how true that is, but the more profound the experience you've had, the longer you should take a break to go in again. And I found that to be true as well. What I found as well, I want to introduce this concept that I've been contemplating is also related to the question of when to go in again is like, when is my integration finished? If I want to, to utilize psychedelics for self actualization and self realization, as we talk about here on this channel, when do we feel that our integration is sufficiently done to go into a next step or into our next journey. And as I've been contemplating that, I realized that, of course, psychedelic integration is never complete. It's an ongoing journey till the end of our life. That's what it feels like to me. So for me, it kind of, conf it, it kind of meshes up the concepts of preparation and integration. The integration of one experience automatically flows into the preparation of the next one. So basically preparation and integration of psychedelic experiences are one. They became one for me. Uh, and even another psychedelic experience can be a deeper integration of a previous one. So that's an interesting concept. Of course, there's just some like facts of tolerance of like you, you should be aware of tolerance if you go in quite frequently, but my approach has been kind of to feel it out. So there's a deep resonance and feeling, which is also not a clear picture always, to feel the calling to go into a journey again. And I wanna kind of make clear, paint a clear picture for you who are watching this channel. Sometimes you can see me uploading trip reports or life trips even, of experiences that I've had quite frequently. And I try to paste them out to kind of get the content rolling, right? I don't go into psychedelic journeys just because I want to create a piece of content. That's a rule I've set for myself, but it can seem like I go in quite regularly, but it's not the case. Like for me, a handful of journeys, maximum, maybe one, two, three even nowadays, a year is hitting it hard like of transformative deep experiences, a couple of experiences a year for me seems like really hitting it hard. And in between I go into 
less intense journeys sometimes. And that's an interesting approach I've been following, kind of feeling the call out. And I get this call naturally a couple of times a year to really explore a substance on a deeper level and go into a deep transformative experience. And then sometimes go into lower dose experiences to just be connected to the psychedelic space as, as well. And then as well, there's phases of my life. In some phases of my life, I noticed I go in more frequently into also intense experiences. And in some phases of my life, sometimes, for example, after a profound experience or after my spiritual crisis, you can watch the video here or download the free workbook uh, in the description as well. There was a six month period where I didn't go into a journey. Maybe even five or four. I, I don't even remember. Maybe it was four, four or five months. But a longer period of time in phases of my life where I do not feel the call to explore deeper. And the, uh, even in psychedelic um, literature and science and research, there is this concept, right, of the matter of dosage related to this approach of frequency of the journey. And it's an interesting one I wanted to share as well. It's kind of like there's a psychedelic approach, psychedelic therapy as in deep transformative high dose experiences and the psycholytic approach, which is kind of lower dose experiences, more psychotherapy, maybe even talking to um, get to some therapeutic result. And also in there is the combination of those. Some theorists and some researchers have been um, kind of putting forward this model of my approach that I've been just doing naturally and explaining basically of the psychedelic approach. The psychedelic approach means having a couple of high dose experiences over longer time frames with longer breaks in between the psychedelic experiences, the really deep transformative work, high dose, mind blowing stuff. And then in between maybe once a month, is, is I found for myself a good frequency, but that is also dependent on the uniqueness of everybody of us, right? Once a month to have a psycholytic approach or a lower dose experiences, low to medium dose experience, once a month in between those big transformative life changing, possibly life changing sessions. Um, and that's kind of my approach, how I've been approaching it lately and which resonates as well for me. And I guess it's a delicate act of balance, right? Life is all about a balancing act. Even in Buddhism, we have this middle way, even the whole of spirituality is kind of a big balancing act. Uh, relationships, business, it, it, it applies to all areas of life and it, it applies also to the use of psychedelic substances, I find. Because it's, as I said, with the feeling of the calling, it's a fine, balance between noticing noticing where this resistance is also coming from from going into a deeper psychedelic journey because this resistance can be a form of avoidance a form of not wanting to look at stuff that is maybe uncomfortable or challenging for us but that we on another level know we want to look at because then it is a matter of courage building up the courage and the trust to go into a deep psychedelic journey to face something that might benefit us to work through and look at even though it might be dark and uncomfortable so there's one part of that noticing and exploring around this topic of avoidance and building up the courage not having like be, be afraid of the psychedelic space. But then also there's approach of um, being ungrounded, being ungrounded and maybe even developing a subtle addiction, even though I guess psychedelics in and of themselves are not addictive. That's a whole nother topic or video in and of itself. But I noticed in some friends and in the community, right, there is a subtle addiction or dependency on heightened blissful states, loving states of consciousness, which you can develop. And it's sometimes even very hard and nuanced to notice it within yourself. And then the frequency of use might, might increase and we go in again and again and again to connect to this ultimate blissful loving state of consciousness, which we either chase or, or I don't know, want to feel connected to. Um, and nothing inherently wrong with that, but that can lead to a ground 
to, to a sense of being ungrounded and to a subtle sense of overuse and addiction and there to find this balance again to not go too deep into transcendence but be grounded in your humanness and in your life as well. Um, Tryptamine Palace is a beautiful book by James Orrock and he explained and some other people also in the 5MEO DMT space as well explained how he was going into initially and going into 5MEO DMT journeys when he first discovered it a couple of times a week into a breakthrough 5MEO DMT journey for longer periods of time and he noticed he was flying above the ground right he was not grounded anymore in his day-to-day -day experience in his human experience and that's what we realize over and over again Leo Gura from Extralize the Rock also described these experiences in his 30-day 5-MeO DMT experiments like if you're really pushing it hard it can be hard to be grounded uh, and to stay in your humanness because yeah and there I guess it's it's wise to find this balancing act between between your frequency of use between going into your journey as well and then as I said it's up to everybody. I know people who are fine with just going way less into psychedelic space. Maybe once every couple of years. Maybe it takes even years for them to process a psychedelic experience. Then some who are never wanting to touch it and that's totally fine as well and who are afraid of that space. And then some of us psychonauts who feel the calling to go in and again and again and again and again and explore deeper and deeper and be kind of on the frontiers of consciousness. And I guess um, Jamie Wheel, I guess, said said that of like it's it's just it's just the case that few people are not meant to go into psychedelic space in this lifetime. Then the majority of people, a lot of people, are are exploring psychedelic space maybe a couple handful of times in their life, and it's a significant event that changes something, and they love it, and it takes years to process and, and just a handful or a couple 10 20 journeys are enough and then there are a few select group of people who feel the call and for whom it's also right to go into psychedelic space over and over again and really push it and explore and and really right have the passion to also go into the depth of the space that is possible to explore with psychedelic substances and i guess you could call those uh, psychonauts right um you might relate with that. I definitely feel like I am that last category, even though I'm sometimes doubting if I, if I'm up to to the intensity of experiences that I'm encountering over and over again. It's it's a super super fascinating field, and that's uh, the thing as well. This doubt that that comes in regarding this balancing act of pace yourself. I found that I. I had that, especially with this YouTube channel and wanting to get into career and build up a coaching practice regarding helping psychonauts and everything that is coming and creating this course and everything that I want to flow into and give back to the community basically is rushing myself to go into depth in a pace that is maybe too fast or not appropriate for myself at my age, at my face in life. And so I guess this wisdom of pacing yourself don't get in over your head into psychedelic space especially if you are young um, is I guess a wise idea but again this pace is very unique to you but I've noticed that if I push it harder and harder and harder sometimes I burn myself right <laughs> with the spiritual crisis and this MDMA plus 5 MEO DMT breakthrough experience I burn myself and I suffered from that even though I also learned from that but, but also being responsible for the consequences. And I found like, yeah, find your own pace. And as I said, there's people who I know who are going into psychedelic, deep psychedelic space week after week, ayahuasca ceremony after ayahuasca ceremony. And if that's the calling and they are fine with that and going into depth of work week after week or in like in a quite frequent frequency, then that's fine as well. But also... Yeah, I guess some people, right, have a couple of months or years break in between. And that's okay as well. If that's your pace, that's totally natural. To take a pause, to not push yourself, that's okay as well. To stop taking psychedelics for a couple of years, that's okay as well. So I guess there's no ultimate answer to this question 
of how often should I go into a psychedelic experience? When should I trip again? Uh, because it is this balancing act. And I guess uh, a background lesson of psychedelic space as well is again, right? Not avoiding bad or challenging experiences, but also not chasing loving or blissful experiences. Because if you go in again and again and again, I feel like you're gonna encounter both. I've definitely encountered both. The bad and the challenging experiences, bad, right? Also an interesting word and topic. And the blissful and loving experiences. And you never know what you're gonna get if you go into the depth of a psychedelic experience. Super fascinating field. I wanna end with a quote from Christopher Beige from LSD and the Mind of the Universe. He pushed it hard, he went into quite frequent high dose, I don't know, six, 700 mic LSD journeys. And um, also an interesting topic as well, he was talking about building momentum. If you go in frequently, you build momentum in the psychedelic space and that can also lead to its benefits and also downsides. But he, I wanna share a quote which he shared, which I wanna leave you with for today's video. And he shared, what a delicate balancing act, right? A little transcendence is a good thing. It is healing, it is reassuring and illuminating. But if we drink too deeply from the well of transcendence, it can undermine our sense of belonging to the earth. And this is an equally important truth not just ascending the mountain, but also coming down, right? We see that over and over again, also in the Zen herd, ten, ten ox, um, Zen herding pictures, right? This coming back to the community, coming back into our humanness, feeling our connection to the Father, to the God, to the Absolute, to the Transcendent, but also to the Mother, to the Feminine, to Kali, to Shakti, to life itself, to existence itself, and balancing our life in between those two, right? As Nisargadatta said, um, love is knowing that I'm everything and wisdom is knowing that I'm nothing. And in between those two, my life moves. So that's about it. If you are excited about exploring this topic deeper and a lot of other topics as well, as I said, join the school community waitlist. That's gonna be coming out in the next coming uh, month or years. Uh, link is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching. Much love, share your thoughts in the comments down below. I love you. See you soon. Mm -hmm.